Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'm going to start a new series on the trigger framework. Uh, you must be wondering why am, am I talking about a trigger framework, right? Since you, everyone knows what triggers is all about, right? I'll tell you in a second, right? So now look at my computer screen, right? This is a trigger, contact trigger. I've written trigger on a contact object. Now look at the screen and look at the code and tell me what's the problem in the code, right? So usually you know when we start ourselves for the first time even you might have done that i've done that many times when i start out first time right to write a trigger something like this right to write you know everything you know your business logic within a trigger okay i mean you might think it's okay you know for a small part of a trigger which never gets changed but that's an assumption right that's a big assumption things changes and you know this kind of a code has a lot of problem to it Okay, the first problem, right? You're writing your business logic within a trigger, okay, which is not a good practice because it's difficult to test. Okay. Second, you need to use a lot of if and else, right, to differentiate if it's for a before insert trigger, if for an after insert, you know, before update. So you need to use the context, right? Trigger context, which is it's okay, but that's a primitive way of doing stuff. Okay. We are you know in 2021, this is not the way you should write a trigger. Okay. I mean, let me be very honest with you. So now the other, other analogy you can say, okay, this is fine. I agree that I agree with you 100% that it's not good to write a business logic uh, inside a trigger. So that's fine. So let's move that to a separate handler class. That's perfect. Okay. Now, if you wanted to move that into handler class, you still have to, you know, work with the trigger context to you know when to call which part of a handler. Okay. So if you wanted to do after instead action right you need to do if trigger dot you know is after and trigger dot is insert and then call the other handler else you know it become like a messy if else kind of you know spaghetti kind of a code which is not great which is absolutely not great because i've seen a lot of code uh which is written this way um and even worse than this right and it costs technical depth going forward so that's one of the reasons why I, I thought it's better to you know demonstrate different trigger frameworks out there it's up to you which one you wanted to use I'll tell you you know which one you can use which one you know you know the advantage and drawbacks kind of stuff right so let's dive into the first one okay so today what I'm going to talk about a very important trigger framework a yet very simple okay um, so that's this one uh, something called SFDC trigger framework. So I'll put the link in the description below and I would just wanted to uh, give shout out to Kevin. Hey mate, this is a great trigger framework. So uh, big shout out to you for creating this. Okay, so this is a trigger framework. So what it, what does it do that, you know, like I said, you know, it's very simple. Uh, so all you have to do, you need to write a, um, so what I'm going to do, so so you go to first you install it right that which is pretty obvious and then i'll remove all of this okay all of the code and so you have to write a separate handler class so the beauty of the handler class i'll tell you in a second so let me search for that so this is a contact trigger handler okay so this is what i've written um so it extends the trigger handler which is which you get as a part of the github package so now if you extend the trigger handler, you get all of this method like before insert, you know, after, you know, after insert, before delete. So it it becomes like a method based handler. So which is very easy to con uh, differentiate, right? You don't have to use a trigger context specifically, right? Other, you know, so all you have to do is inherit this trigger handler. And so let me. Um, Oh, somewhere there, trigger handler. Oh, let me see those CLS. Oh, no. Sometimes, you know, my Visual Studio Code it doesn't work very efficiently. I don't know if it's something to do with Ubuntu, but it shouldn't be the case, though. So if I go here and you see, it doesn't take me there. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah, this is a trigger handler class. Okay, so now you can see that 
it has a lot of methods here and what i'll tell you one of the cool methods right which which i really like about uh this specific trigger handler i'll just tell you in a second so let me uh, so so this is a run and uh, max loop count you know clear max loop count you can use that and you know so these are the you know different methods you know before delete before update so this is pretty cool right and so all you have to do so that's exactly what i've done so trigger handler so you know if you wanted to do after insert you can do after create a separate method and we go to the trigger here all you have to do new yeah and then use this contact trigger handler all right so run all right that all you have to do okay you don't have to do any fancy coding here. You don't have to, you know, uh, you know, overpopulate, you know, with, uh, you know, trigger context here, because it looks messy, right? Let's be honest. So if you do, if you know, trigger on insert, trigger on after insert, that doesn't look good whatsoever. Okay. I mean, you might find it pretty. I don't find it pretty. I mean, I find it yuck and ugly. Uh, that's my opinion, though. Um, so all you have to do this. You don't have to worry about any other. A handler class right just one class and this is a code all you have to do this part of the code you don't have to change this you just can forget about it right pretend that you know this code never existed okay then if you wanted to do modification you can do this uh, inside this okay now you might even encounter a scenario okay you might encounter a scenario in your uh you know day-to-day -day, you know salesforce operation where you might have to do a data load okay so when you when you say for instance you know your company might have acquired another company okay so you wanted to bring their accounts data or contacts data let's say you wanted to uh, bring the contact data to it okay um, and um, so during that process you want to bypass say for instance account trigger or for so for whatever reason right say if, uh, you know you wanted to bypass a trigger handler before performing certain action okay you can pretty much do that here okay so you know so you can pretty much say for instance if i wanted to uh bypass a specific trigger okay before uh this code get executed you can pretty much do that trigger uh handler dot you know bypass okay so you can just put the name of the the trigger handler there you go that that code will be bypassed and and after that you can you know remove the bypass option so this this is very handy okay imagine if you have to build everything from the scratch right it, it will get messy you know you might write this you might and an advantage of having a specific trigger framework in my personal opinion it brings consistency to your code think about a scenario right when you're working for a pro working on a vendor project working for a vendor and you got like 10 different developers right working on a project and everyone have their own creative my idea right okay i wanted to do this way i wanted to do the you know in a different way so that will lead to a consistency problem a big consistency problem right that's one of the thing i hate you know when i look at you know different orgs salesforce or org, some of the codes were horribly written right and you know even you know written by people from a big so-called big companies right and that's why i it's my personal opinion there's no offense to anyone but i mean a big companies means absolutely nothing to me if if the developers are crap right so that's why i always insist right whenever i see, you know to write please write better code please write better code don't write shitty apex or lwc code right because we shouldn't be uh you know polluting Salesforce ecosystem with bad code. That's the only thing I've been, I've been, I've been talking about this for ages and ages and ages. You know, whenever I give a conference talk, I talk about this. You bring me a shitty code, it goes to into rubbish bin. That's where it belongs, not in an org, right? So that's why having a trigger framework will give you that advantage. It's a starting point, though. Okay, now this is an advantage, cool advantage. Now the drawback about it is too primitive uh, in terms of. Uh, things you can do right. It's very limited to trigger. Okay, you if you wanted to extend this to say other apex customization You can't do it Right, so if your aim is only to um, Go for a primitive uh, sorry go for a trigger framework. Then this is fantastic. They're very simple uh, 
sorry, I didn't mean to use primitive. My apologies for that. Um, so what I meant by that, you know, it can't use for LWC or other stuff, right? It's just very limited to, um, say, um, uh, for trigger writing, like like you have financial force, right? Lib, which I'm going to talk about in, in the coming lecture. You can do select a class. You can do domain class. So this one is very simple, okay? This is a very good place. If you are only after a trigger framework, this will do a fantastic job, right? And it will help you write a clean code. So think about it. If, if this is something you're after, I'll put in the link in the description below for GitHub page. Read about it. You know, it, it, it got cool features, right? I really liked about the bypass trigger option, which is fantastic in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, one more drawback I wanted to mention. There is no, uh, you know, setup-based bypass control you have to do this in a code if you are an admin right you can't pretty much do that using uh, uh, inter user interface right so I mean you can build on top of it like like for instance in in terms of financial force lib there is none but I built on top of it right you can build it I mean you can extend this uh, framework you know based on your requirement but this is a pretty good framework right it's, it's a good framework to start with if you are after a framework you know okay that's that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, my apologies. Uh, this is a very short lecture. You might be expecting a bigger one. I will talk about a bigger, you know, aspect of the framework when I talk about nonprofit framework next time, right? Which is very interesting, very exciting. Stay tuned to that. Okay. That being said, you guys have an amazing. Um, what day is it today? Wednesday. Sorry, I I lost track of day. It's been such a busy day. Adios.